Good day. Thank you for watching another episode of the Manila Times Coffee Break, where we catch up with the hot topics and issues of the day. My name is Defort Villaseran, and with me today is Mario Luis Louis Castaneda, Country Manager of Fortinet Philippines, a developer of cybersecurity solutions. Louis, thanks for taking a break from your demanding schedule. I know it's uh, really a challenge to be able to pencil in a coffee break with you. I imagine business has been booming, especially this year. Yep, yep. Hey, uh, thank you again, Dapport, for inviting me to this uh, coffee break. I'm a coffee drinker. I love coffee. <laughs> So I think this is a perfect uh, setup, uh, you know, for us, to, for me to share what's happening with Fortinet. Well, uh, some Manila Times readers might know that I did a cover story on you uh, in the Boardroom Watch section exactly last year in October. But today is actually the first time I get to interact with you in real time. So uh, the question I wasn't able to throw at you last year was, how do you like to have your coffee prepared? Uh, so this time I'm asking. Oh, so normally I make my own coffee. Uh, it depends also on my mood. So if I really like just regular coffee, then I just go for the regular brewer. Then I have an espresso maker as well. Mm. Okay. But if I like really personalized, uh, you know, coffee, what I do is I, I, I like freshly ground beans. So I ground my beans. And then for me, best way to drink coffee is uh, using coffee press. Because the filter actually removes some of the flavor of the coffee. So... Uh -huh. So I normally go for that dark roast, uh, single origin type coffee. So you know, ah, maybe, very maybe detailed. <laughs> pretty detailed. So you know, th that's the best way for me to to, to consume coffee. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, coffee habits are characteristically and revealingly personalized. Uh, as followers of our program know by now, um, I take mine black uh, with a teaspoon full of chia seeds for extra strength. Uh, that way, I'm able to give a strong greeting. So, welcome, Rui, to the Manila Times Coffee Break. Thank you. Thank you, Dapport. So, as a backgrounder, uh, Fortinet is the local subsidiary of a multinational corporation that's based in Sm uh, Sunnyvale, California, USA. It develops and sells cybersecurity solutions, including but not limited to physical products such as firewalls. And uh, Louis Castaneda is its uh, Tony Stark in the Philippines. But according to a recent Agence France press report on Friday, October 15, cyber extortion is a booby booming felony. So uh, criminals are really raking it in. Uh, just, just to give people an idea, U.S. authorities reported $590 million in ransomware-related payments were made in just the first half of this year, 2021. So to put that into perspective, that uh, half-year figure is just 42% higher than the entire declared ransomware extortion money for all of 2020. So uh, that doesn't even include uh, payments that were made on the hush hush. So it's really some uh, it's really a big problem now worldwide. Uh, cyber crime itself has become more sophisticated, not just with individual perpetrators, but uh, listen to this: uh, there are international gangs and even state-sanctioned crews worldwide. So with the rise of digital attackers and ultra hackers uh, slicing into institutional systems, uh, there is a need to put uh, armor, so to speak, around organizational databases. Hence, our webisode for today is titled Armoring the Age of Ultra Digitalization. Louis, how do you, as, as, as the country manager, how do you oversee the logistics, development of new business and profitability, as well as the overall operations, staffing and budgeting reports for Fortinet? Sure. So that for you know, Fortinet, as you mentioned, is a global cybersecurity leader, and uh, we're actually uh, one of the top cybersecurity providers in the Philippines. So uh, the idea is really how do we work with organizations and empower them, uh, and to also secure their what we call digital journey. At the same time, uh, be able to protect their uh, organization's infrastructure against the booming threat that you just mentioned. Yes. Uh, a lot of this is actually brought about by the change in the way we do or the, the change the way we work. We, we want to call it work from anywhere. Some, yes. Some people as, we, it, uh, as we can see from your background, uh, it seems like uh, you're enjoying a yeah, work, from, work from the beach scenario. And, and I think some do call it now as the new normal. Uh, we call it uh, a hybrid workforce where some people work 100% at home, some actually do a 50-50, some work in the office and also at home. So, you know, there's a lot of 
changes that happened and that in a way brought about the rise of uh, what you mentioned in terms of uh, threats. Uh, the most common now that you would hear is uh, ransomware. You know, ransomware is everywhere. Mm-hmm. And and uh, I think the cyber criminals, they saw the opportunity. A lot more people accessing their corporate corporate infrastructure or resources from the outside. And most of the time with unsecured devices, new devices that has not been properly vetted or uh, secured by their corporate IT people. So there's that that opportunity for them to to tap into this uh, you know uh, gap in terms of mm-hmm. security, uh, infrastructure. So going back, so Fortinet, our objective is really, uh, in my case, identifying opportunities where Fortinet can offer its product and services, and that uh, that uh, covers the entire spe- spectrum of uh, business in the Philippines. So from I, from FSI to government to tel- telecommunications to SMB. And uh, I work closely with my team, so uh, uh, we are building uh, an even bigger team now. So we're in uh, that growth phase. So last year, as you mentioned, was a boom year. In fact, Philippines was recognized as the top performing country for Fortinet in Southeast Asia. And uh, also, you know, uh, for us, uh, we have to have the right staff on board with the right skills, the right and uh, the right competency. So we could provide the right solution and uh, support to our customers in the market. So, in a nutshell, that's what I do in the Philippines. Really, uh, manage the the operations, the marketing, and the sales together with my team in growing this business to a more profitable uh, level for Fortinet. That seems like a lot on your plate, uh, and I'm sure it really helps to be able to have uh, your trusty team. Uh, your core group that you build around you, uh, and th- that expands to the the growth of the organization. Could you give us a, give us an idea of uh, how much the company has grown since the time that you had uh, come on board? Uh, how how you uh, sure. developed it? Uh, sure. So when I joined, we were roughly uh, about just fourteen people, fifteen people, and uh, you know that was about three years back. And uh, I would say uh, I could I couldn't say the, uh, the you know the current revenue, but uh, what I can say is uh, we we are we more than doubled the business all already in three years time, and in fact we are growing our our size our, our, our the team into about triple of what it is when I joined three years ago, mm-hmm. and that means and that also necessitated for us to move to an even bigger office. In, 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 uh, so I had to move our, our office into a bigger one with a bigger data center where our partners and customers could visit and also use in testing our solutions and more you know more area for my team to collaborate not only internally but also with our partners and our customers. So you know uh, business has really been doing pretty well for Fortinet. So mm-hmm. I, I guess you know uh, that that also was recognized by our management team and. That's the reason they have given the go signal to actually, you know, hire more people and and make sure that we we have the right number of people to support the growth of the of the business. Oh, that's interesting. Um, it in a time when people are uh, losing their jobs and businesses are are shuttering, uh, you're actually helping provide uh, employment for Filipinos and at the same time uh, generate income for for communities. Yeah, after the. Maybe uh, it's a uh, one of the things that I might be able to share is like uh, you know uh, in in fact they recognize also the talent of the Filipino in terms of uh, cybersecurity. We're actually opening one of our support centers in the Philippines. Uh, if you visit LinkedIn, you would see that we have about 40 plus openings for cybersecurity personnel. So we're really really hiring a lot of people, and uh, and, and, and as you know. Cybersecurity skills. There's quite a big gap, not only in the Philippines but also worldwide, and uh, that's the reason why when they saw the potential of Filipinos to be really good cybersecurity uh, uh, personnel, then they, they they decided that they are opening a support center here in the Philippines. Well, that's good news for our viewers. Perhaps uh, they'll be sending in their resumes right after this uh, this talk that we have. Sure, sure, that would be good. Well, 
Uh, what's not so evident, though, is how much more difficult and dangerous the work of cybersecurity companies such as Fortinet now is. Uh, this is due to the sev- severe and sophisticated uh, way that cr- cyber criminals have become. Um, what is the so-called digital first world? Uh, can you explain that? And what are the catalyst conditions that this brave new world has created? Sure. So if I base it on uh, a definition of IDC, what is a digital first world? So it's really more uh, answering that question, is there some digital-based capability that could improve our lives mm-hmm. and achieve a desired outcome? So it's really more finding this digital-based solution. And uh, this actually applies to any entity. So it applies to governments, to companies, to consumer. So, you know, it, it covers all, uh, you know, it covers the society. And a digital for the first world, actually creates more interdependence with people and different organizations, those that are providing these solutions. So in if you look at 2020, it accelerated digital transformation. And that digital transformation actually became a catalyst on what we call now the, uh, a digital first world. And also now because of the, the advent of uh, people working from home or remote remote work, or we call, some call it home working, also now you would hear about cloud computing. A lot of people are, a lot of companies are moving to or considering cloud computing. Some are actually adopting cloud computing at a quite a fast rate. So you would see that digital also, digital transformation, while it's all good, it also increases the attack surface. Yes. <laughs> in, in, so can, can you explain this? Uh, what are attack surfaces and how have these increased in three areas in the digital space? Sure. So the three areas that we see uh, because of the advent of this one, of this uh, digital transformation, uh, would be new edges. I mean, you know, you have more devices connected, being connected, and you have new applications because uh, gone are the days when applications just reside on a data center. Now, because a lot of applications are being adopted by the cloud. And the last one would be new ecosystems. So you will have new players uh, providing different solutions to to the, to the businesses and also to consumers uh, as they start, you know, adapting a lot more of these new digital uh, oriented uh, solutions. So I would say those are the three areas: new edges, new applications, and new ecosystems. Okay, but uh, given that um, clearly e-commerce and non-contact digital solutions or in transactions have come of, come of age in the country uh, and in other evolving economies. Uh, because of this pandemic, what new conveniences can we look forward to in the uh, so-called digital first world? And what are the potential threats that come with it uh, that Fortinet can help protect us? Sure. In terms of conveniences, there's actually a lot because mm-hmm. now uh, you would see uh, a lot of these new technologies being adapted. Uh, I think one of the in the future, what you would see is, and we are testing that already actually in the Philippines. Uh, you would see a lot more of these uh, uh, driverless uh, vehicles. Yes. Uh, you would see that already in, in more advanced countries like US and China, actually. Then you would also see a lot of these uh, AI assisted uh, 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 solutions. Like, for example, you could see doctors now uh, using AI to help them in, in treating patients. You would, you would see the use of augmented reality when it comes to designing, for example, uh, in architecture or homes, when you could actually feel how you, your house would look like if you enter this augmented reality uh, solution. So there's a lot. Uh, and also now you, you, you're using a lot of smart devices uh, that could actually help you monitor your health. And it, you could actually use the same smart devices to alert doctors for potential issues that uh, you might be having with your health because it could send an alarm to, for example, to a hospital or your your personal doctor. But then again, that also, as I mentioned, that, that's the edge part or the application part that needs to be used to, to operate these devices. So a lot of these are unfortunately not that secure because these are new solutions that are just uh, joining the, you know, the mainstream uh, solutions available in the market. So a lot of times, uh, this is not as secure as you want them to be. And those are the things that uh, a lot of uh, companies need to consider because their employees are using these devices. Their employees are using a lot of these uh, new uh, uh, services 
uh, that that helps them in in their daily life. So, a lot of things, a lot of times, for example, in the work from home scenario, uh, a lot of the workers are using uh, routers that are supplied by the telcos, which are traditionally home routers. They're not the corporate type, uh, corporate uh, level routers that are secure. So, yes. and also a lot of times they will be using their personal devices like iPads or sometimes uh, the computers of their kids or their computers are also being used by their kids uh, to access, you know, uh, homeschooling. So a lot of times this doesn't have the necessary advanced security that you will find in a corporate grade uh, computer devices. So those are the things that, you know, companies need to look out for in terms of uh, the overall scenario on the, the new uh, the new way of looking this looking at business or securing their, their business. So how does Fortinet come in here? What what can you give us examples of the solutions that you provide? Uh, things you've done for for companies uh, that way they have an idea of what it is that they they, they don't know yet that they need that that you can actually help make uh, simpler and easier for them. So sure. So a lot of times uh, what we have done uh, is really introduce solutions that cater to specific needs of our customers. No, I think uh, you might have heard of a, uh, a solution called SD1. It's a byword of a lot of uh, uh, companies now who are looking at a more cost-effective way of connecting their other offices, their branches into the head office and also to the cloud. And uh, SD1 stands for Software Defined Wide Area Network. And uh, now it, it's actually an old solution, but it became more, uh, I would say, the top of the list in terms of the, the connectivity that are being uh, considered by companies because of the inherent uh, cost effectiveness of this solution. At the same time, it also allows them to move away the, on the more uh, expensive traditional way of connection between a, a branch and a head office. And it also comes with it, you know, uh, a certain level of, uh, of, uh, of assurance that it's a secure connectivity and it has also a built-in redundancy in terms of if there's a, a degradation in the in the quality of service or the line that you're using to connect, it can switch to a, another line uh, that will offer a better QoS or quality of service. So a lot of companies are using or looking at that now. And then also, since a lot of companies have uh, migrated some of their core applications or solutions into the cloud, they also want to have a secure way of doing that in a more, I would say, uh, effective or more uh, productive way of for, for their for their uh, employees to access these uh, resources. Before, it has to be backhauled, meaning. When they connect to the cloud, the employee needs to connect to the data center in corporate and corporate now connects to the cloud to access the application and vice versa. But now, because of mm -hmm. you know, the new solutions that we are able to provide in Fortinet, you can have direct access to, to those resources without having to go or having your your, your connecti connections backhauled uh, to, to, to your data center, corporate data center. And also, now we also are providing a lot of solutions that help you on the edge part of your business. So we have solutions like uh, uh, that, that, you know, not only provides antivirus or anti-spam capabilities, but also provides, uh, for example, a remote wor worker, a way to authenticate their connect connection, that they're the legitimate uh, user. At the same time, we can uh, assign specific uh, levels of uh, access depending on the role or depending on the level of the employee in what resources they can access. Okay. So you would also hear uh, technologies uh, we call the zero trust. I said before, the, 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 the companies when they design security, the, 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 the design is really you trust everyone as long as you're in the corporate uh, environment. But since now we move to a remote work environment, the, the, the new thing that's uh, being uh, adopted by a lot of organizations is what we call uh, zero trust access or zero, zero trust network uh, architecture. And that is uh, limit the trust that you provide uh, uh, anyone accessing uh, uh, corporate resources and then just providing the, the appropriate access by, based on the privilege that should be granted them. So 
a lot of things, a lot of uh, solutions that Fortinet are are are, are offering our, our our customers or or the market in the Philippines. So in effect, you put a suit of armor around client systems. Evidently, cybersecurity firms such as Fortinet are more than ever increasingly relevant in a digital first world. Um, and you also mentioned uh, cloud services and other types of uh, uh, things you provide for clients. But um, apart from the thing, the kinds of services that you can say are also provided by other other brands or other companies, uh, can you share with us uh, more proprietary or more Fortinet specific kinds of services and 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 products? Sure. Uh, well, if, if you actually look at it, uh, I would say. A lot of the solutions that Fortinet uh, offers the market, some of them can be also found in some of the competing uh, vendors or brands. Uh, like for example, everyone will have their own next generation firewall solution. And all of them will have, for example, uh, their own uh, network access control or even uh, a web application uh, firewall solution. Well, the difference with Fortinet, though, is we operate it in a context of leveraging on, on what we call a platform. We call it our security fabric. That that security fabric actually ensures that all the solutions we offer in the market can work together seamlessly and manage it on what we call a single pane of glass. And I think that is the difference in terms of what our uh, other vendors will be able to offer in the market. Uh, and maybe to explain that further, some vendors are what we call point product uh, solution providers. So they just provide a specific solution addressing a specific area. Fortinet offers an end-to-end -end security solution from the cloud. We call it from the cloud to the edge and everything, everything in between. So in, in our case, if you're a company that you know wants to secure uh, a, a, a worker from the edge device and how it accesses resources to, the, to a branch or the office where he is, to the corporate and also to the cloud, and maybe, for example, for a manufacturing customer, accessing information that's connected into the OT environment or what we call the operational technology side of the business, we can provide solution a seamless solution that we can integrate everything. And uh, I would say that's the biggest advantage of Fortinet because we have that breadth of a uh, solution that works well together and we can guarantee that it's work, it, work, it will work. But on the other hand, that also doesn't mean that we can work with other vendors or other solutions that our customers might already have. So what Fortinet does, and I think we're proud to say this, is uh, we actually have what we call a, a an ecosystem where we we offer uh, uh, potential partners or third party uh, providers or vendors of other security solutions a way to connect to Fortinet uh, you know products and services and uh, that that allows us to be able to help uh, integrate some of the solutions that our customers already have, and that means uh, they don't have to throw those solutions away. Yes. We could make them work with, with our solutions. So I think that's also an advantage that our customers are seeing in terms of what Fortinet can provide them. And uh, that means, you know, we, we are we are more inclusive. So we want to, 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 to be able to help our customer maximize the investment that they've already had and also uh, integrate that with the new solutions that they need because of this changing work environment. Yes, I think that's, um, that's smart, a smarter way of going about things. Uh, companies uh, don't have to double up on their expenditures. At the same time, uh, you're actually encouraging the entire industry rather than putting each other down. You're actually pulling each other, helping to pull each other up uh, by, by way of collaboration even. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in, in fact, maybe, maybe the effort on, on that end as well. So Fortinet Worldwide, or our, 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 our corporate uh, 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 management, what they do is they're very active in a, in a in a joining consortiums of different cybersecurity vendors, where they actually share. Uh, you know, for example, uh, we have FortiGuard Labs, where we have all this you know collection of uh, the, all the threats that uh, we, we we see happening around the world globally, and we share that information with other vendors. 
so we could you know jointly work together in developing solutions so it's not just an, a fortinet uh, solution no? it's a solution that will be able uh, to address the needs of, of the greater or the greater majority so what we do is we work together with other uh, security providers so we could actually exchange uh, information and make this available to our to our consumers or our customers so you you touched upon the three areas of new edges and new applications and new ecosystems where their emergence and definition make our world more exposed. Um, at the same time, um, you gave examples or instances where you plugged in new forms of data leaks and preempted emerging variants of weak points. Uh, is there any anything else that you'd like to add to that in terms of uh, what uh, Fortinet has been able to do in the local setting? Oh, okay. Uh... I would say it's really more of you know how how do we uh, you know for me cybersecurity is a is a joint effort. It's not just one company being able to provide all the solutions. You know there will be solutions that are uh, I would say uh, better uh, done by other vendors. You know, but again uh, it boils down to the change or the shift in terms of how our customers actually consume these solutions before they, they can get away with point products and they, you know do the manual uh, thing of trying to integrate it with the other point products now they're realizing like no that, that doesn't work because that means that i need to hire more specialized people who are able to support these different products if i have a single platform approach where i have multiple solutions that addresses different areas of my business Mm -hmm. I manage that under a single pane of glass or single management console. Then I just have to hire one that I can train to be able to manage my cybersecurity infrastructure. That's why a lot of customers now are considering that approach because of you know the inherent uh, shortages as well that I mentioned in terms of skills. In the same time, uh, to simplify the way you manage the the, the corporate uh, infrastructure. It does seem like uh, it's it's a very advantageous thing to have your single plane of glass uh, 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 application, right? But at the same time, uh, it's integrated and seamless, as you mentioned. But if 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 I may, uh, I just want to bring up a possible thought that uh, clients who understand this uh, might think, and, and perhaps this is the opportunity to. Answer it in advance. Uh, in term, I'm sure it'll break, it'll come up because of what recently happened to Facebook and its its uh, similar interconnected platforms with uh, Instagram and WhatsApp. Uh, when they had, uh, since they're all interconnected and uh, following the same platform, when they had problem with one, everything was affected and the access or or usability of, of all these integrated services was uh, well, was down for a while. Uh, and how is your seamless integrated setup uh, workflow and single pane of glass uh, different from from that kind of uh, setup? And, and that kind of scenario is not something that would apply to your your single plane pane of glass. Sure, sure. Actually, when when we did, when we design solutions for our customer we make it a point uh to to consider what might happen if those things that you mentioned actually occur in the case of that facebook instagram thing it's more of an, uh, a global network outage mm -hmm. more than anything else but but for 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 fortinet when we design our solutions we make it a point to inform our customers that you know aside from the fact that our products have built in uh you know a uh, way of how to recover in ca in case of failures. Mm -hmm. Some actually we recommend that we build in what we call redundancy in their uh, infrastructure. So that yes, you mentioned be, that earlier. Yeah, that could be in the form of a high availability. So normally, if you buy, you buy for example a firewall, you would want some another firewall firewall that uh, would be on standby. Uh, or other devices or you know, solutions that we sell. So in case something happened, it could switch to that particular uh, uh, backup or high availability uh, scenario. Others, you know, uh, uh, depending on the solution that our customer acquire, depending also on uh, on the level of, you know, it needs to be up 
all the time uh, because some some solution is you can get away with you know a downtime of an hour maybe because it's not really critical to the business but for those critical solutions that needs to be up 24 by 7 then we do design it in such a way that uh, there's a failover scenario in case something happened uh, mm-hmm. in, 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 in the system you know you never know uh, that's on the physical side of the you know of the solution but then again also uh, uh, maybe uh, trying to address uh, uh, or maybe you will ask me this later on but for example in the case of uh, when a customer is uh, hacked mm-hmm. so some of the things that uh, we do or we, we actually recommend is like uh, you know there's a, some steps that are should be in place in terms of our customer and I think you mentioned that in uh, your, your question earlier on in the area of ransomware where some customers are actually prepared to pay uh, when when they when they for example uh, experience a ransomware, some of the best practices that are we recommend our, to our customers is they have to have a backup, like not only on the uh, high availability on the physical de- devices, but also a backup on their application or their data, and it's secured. So in case, for example, of a ransomware attack, and you know that you are uh, pretty, you're one of those who doesn't pay, you know. Uh, then you could restore the system using those back. So, you know, there's a lot of ways that uh, we're able to also help and advise our customers in, in different areas on, on their infrastructure. There's this old movie called uh, Sneakers with Robert Redford, wherein uh, he has a team of people that try to, uh, well, not necessarily digitally enter people's secure spaces, but uh, well, what they do is uh, they try to crack into a wide range of your, whether it's a, a literal safe or uh, in terms of trying to get information from an organization. That's the service they provide for 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 clients, right? Does Fortinet have anything similar to that, wherein uh, you not only help provide uh, protection or an armor for for companies' uh, uh, critical information? But you also provide that service of uh, trying to show them how vulnerable they are by uh, coming by doing a scenario or a trial hack into their system. Uh, okay. Uh, well, we don't have that kind of service at mm-hmm. least in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. But what we do is like we actually have uh, you know uh, what we do with our customers is we organize. Um, I, uh, I forgot the, the the name of this uh, activity where we actually do a, a red a red team blue team scenario where yes, one, yes. where one yeah. tries to hack and the one tries to defend. Yeah. There are it, it's it's good to have those uh, they're like fire drills for 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 data system management and risk risk uh, preparedness. Yeah, we actually do that with our customers where. Mm-hmm. You know, we invite a number of them. Uh, in fact, we have been trying to organize that. That, that one is better face to face, like you know, you you are in a in a in an area in a room, mm-hmm. and uh, we do actually uh, do that. Uh, we were planning to do that in the Philippines, but because of the pandemic, we have yeah, to. Yeah, unfortunately, that. yes. But but that's those are some of the things that we, we actually do because you know, one thing to have a plan, one thing to have the solution in place, but one thing to experience it and mm-hmm. know how to react to it. So we do that. We actually do that with with, uh, with with our customers, and we actually do that as well with our partners. Mm-hmm. I can with imagine that's very exciting. That that's a, a very energetic activity. Yeah, they they like that because you know it's actual scenario. You are given a task to, for example, penetrate a a particular thing, a, a particular application or solution, and then the other one is you know, looking for ways on how to, to, to prevent it. And the mm-hmm. other thing is like, it also teaches you on how, what are the things you need to consider when you're securing your, your infrastructure, right? Because if you have people trying to attack you in multiple areas, then now you start to think like, if I, I'm a hacker, mm-hmm. how should I be you know, reinforcing uh, my, my, my infrastructure? Exactly. Um, that's actually something I'd want to get into. It. It's uh, it's actually a, a few questions down, but uh, it, we might as well jump to it. Uh, it's basically how we want to be able to shift from a uh, defensive, uh, threat-oriented uh, mindset to to something that's that's more uh, uh, 
attentive and and uh, uh, you, you're kind of uh, setting yourself in a situation where, uh, like you said, uh, you have to start thinking like uh, someone who who wants to get into your system and and steal your data. Yeah, yeah. So so I I, I guess it's really more of a. Again, cybersecurity one of the key components that the, that car, car, uh, companies needs to consider is the actually training, training their employees on this scenario, mm-hmm. and they have to have a process in place to be able to deal with when you, ha- you when you when you're faced with this scenario. So again, uh, you know what are the more common ones aside from the ransomware I mentioned? Phishing is very rampant. You know. Yes. It could be targeted. It could be they have what they call a whaling, you know. It likes you. Know, you throw something out there, and hopefully someone, you know, uh, foolish enough, you know, click download whatever file that is in a company. So that's a gateway for them to enter the organization. So you know, if you are not able to train your people on the proper cybersecurity hygiene, not only when they're in the office but also when they're at home accessing. Corporate uh, resources, then you are you are vulnerable. You know the best solution cannot protect you if it's an insider who actually are being used to get into your uh, system. So mm-hmm. that's why it's very important that uh, your you, you, co- companies actually train their employees. Uh, actually, and may, might, might be again a, a, a plug. <laughs> One of the solutions that we actually offer is like. Aside from we have this our security uh, gateway solution, our email security gateway solution, we actually have a solution that uh, uh, companies can use to simulate uh, phishing. So, like uh, when you receive an email, uh, there's a tab there that you know when you you click it, it will report uh, to to a, a group. Uh, it can be Fortinet, it could be your your internal group, and it will plug it as a potential fish uh, email so they could study it and then it will get back to you to tell you for example it's a legitimate uh, email or it's a phishing email but then again uh, you know some basic stuff that people uh, should be doing is like you know uh, there's certain certain uh, alarm bells uh, when, when you receive emails like that, like for example, if it compels you to act now, <laughs> if it, you're receiving from someone you haven't heard from a while, but it's like there's a, a, a senior role associated with, with that. Or for example, it's uh, coming from HR. And mm-hmm. you know, people are normally, you know, uh, attentive when you're getting emails from your management, upper management or HR. So, you know, Things like those, you know, if you're able to train your people on what to look out for, then you're helping a lot your organizations from, a, from, a, from a, you know, not being a victim of all these things. Well, how about 5G? Uh, that brings a whole world of applications. At the same time, it also brings in oceans and waves of challenges. Uh, what are the dangers of the so-called high speed with low latency? Okay. Dangers of high speed and low latency. You know, uh, 5G, we've been hearing that a lot. In fact, now uh, I'm being bombarded from uh, iPhone telling me that I need to upgrade to the latest 5G <laughs> models of iPhone. But you know, uh, 5G, it, it has uh, what they call uh, the inherent advantage of high speed with low latency. You know, because now you could actually download or even you know uh, run application much faster than what you've been experiencing with 4G or LTE. And uh, but also, it, it has a lot of dangers associated with it because one, uh, because of the inherent high speed that 5G is able to provide, uh, decentralized security. It's more decentralized now uh, because of the a, a greater number of traffic coming into the network. See, it's fast, so the security is not as adept because a lot of the security has been designed to cover a 4G or LTE speed. So now, because this is a new technology, so some uh, some companies are still trying to adapt to a 5G type network. Also, because of the greater bandwidth that uh, 5G is able to offer, this hurts a lot of the current scenario or setup of uh, companies in terms of cybersecurity 
because again of the issue of added speed and volume now it's coming to them much faster than they were uh, you know able to do before when they're managing just a 4G and an LTE network so how does Fortinet provide impenetrable armoring for 5G systems? So we, we have a lot of solutions uh, that uh, we actually have uh, in place and uh, we're working with, with our telco uh, uh, customers. Like, like one, uh, we have uh, solutions like a Fortinet CGNAT or a carrier grade NAT, network addressable table. That's, uh, you know, it's a term that, you know, these are uh, telco uses this to be able to actually before address uh, the inherent shortage of uh, IP addresses in IPv4 but now we have IPv6 but since they have this legacy uh, uh, infrastructure in place you use a solution like a CGNAT to address this so what we do is we have companies in their migration from 4G to 4.5G that's LTE yes. to 5G and uh, that also involves migration from physical devices to a virtual one because a lot of companies now are also careful companies are deploying virtual solutions. Then we have what we call that FortiGate uh, secure gateway implementation uh, that also help implement what we call a VNF or virtual network function functionality and also a physical implementation of, of that which we call VNF. And uh, those are the things that as a telco, you have to think when you start offering 5G services. How do I secure the 5G services that I'm able to offer to my customers? And last but not least, I would say our firewall. Yeah, majority of the telco in the Philippines uses our, our FortiGate firewall as their first line of defense when it comes to you know uh, those connecting to the telco or accessing the services from the telco and also the telco offering the services to their consumers. Well, you mentioned earlier uh, the, the advantages of cloud computing, uh, but also at the same time, you have that situation called the failure to comply scenario. Is that something, how does uh, Fortinet help address this? Sure. Uh, some data points. So, Flexera, uh, in their 2020, they're one of those companies offering this uh, cloud you know uh, cloud reports so they were saying that 93 percent of enterprise customers reported they are looking at adopting a multi-cloud strategy so meaning they're looking at multiple vendors of cloud both public and private but mostly on public so you're familiar with the likes of aws azure google cloud and you now have ali cloud or alibaba cloud in the philippines so multi Cloud, uh, multi-cloud deployments are becoming common in the Philippines. But at the same time, uh, one of the challenges is how do you provide visibility across this multi-cloud? You see, they have their own management consoles. So how do you are able to provide uh, visibility across this multi-cloud? Because one, as I mentioned, they have different management tools. So that actually creates a gap and also allows, uh, it also, uh, Customers are having issue in terms of control because there's a lot of security things that they need to consider on this multi-cloud environment. So also, again, some data points, 67% of the respondents answered misconfiguration of security is their biggest cloud risk. Because, you know, again, lack of uh, skills is uh, one of them or lack of expertise and also lacks, lack of understanding on how to fit these various cloud solutions together. So those are the things that uh, you know are, are impacting the adoption of uh, also cloud, uh, multi-cloud uh, in the Philippines. So in Fortinet, what we do is we reduce the risk when it comes to cloud computing by first reassessing the risk at the edge. You have to look at the edge that are being used by, by the customers. Then we also uh, consider what we call case-driven uh, interworking architecture. So, because we have a lot of customers already adopted it, not only in the Philippines, but also worldwide, then we've learned on how they were able to use it and what are the best way of implementing it. And maybe uh, third is we have to focus on what we call security-driven networking. So, now you have to consider some of the things that I mentioned earlier, like zero trust, adaptive cloud security, 
and and also that public management center that the single pane of glass thing that I mentioned earlier. Yes. Uh, last but not the least, maybe is to you have to consider that zero trust strategy. Everyone now have to consider the zero trust strategy uh, in in deploying their security solutions. Well. Uh, that it probably includes even not just pri- the private sector, but even the government, uh, which is uh, likely why the Department of Information, Communications and Technology launched the National Cybersecurity Plan 2022. Um, how has Fortinet helped the government and even the private sector to shift from being threat oriented and reactive to being integrity oriented and predictive? Sure. So one of the things that we do, and obviously we work both with the private sector and the, and, and the government and the and in fact we have a lot of government customers that have deployed Fortinet solutions so one of the things that we do is we actually help educate them on what what are the areas that they need to secure what are the security solutions within Fortinet that we can offer to address those those particular issues and how we could help them in the planning of what security uh, solutions are are out there that they might need to consider moving forward as they continue to evolve uh, you know, the security infrastructure of government. And uh, one of the things that we also do is we, we help them uh, what we call build a modern cybersecurity strategy. So you have to consider that, that whole process and also consider the, the risk uh, management uh, aspect of it. You know, it's not just you know, buying a security solution, implementing it, that's it. But it has to be a continuous process. You have to be able to improve on that security infrastructure because you know our, uh, you know, the other side is also improving. You know, the hackers are becoming finding a way. Yes. Yes. Yeah. They they're, they're actually using DevOps as well. They're using AI as well in creating their 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 next uh, uh, you know uh, malware that they were going to unleash into the market. So as a as an uh, you know as an organization, but public and private, then you have to also have that continuous improvement in, 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 in the process and also in, in improving the, the cybersecurity infrastructure of, 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 uh, your, your, uh, in, of, your net, of your network. So what are the things that they need to consider? Visibility across the network. Uh, they have to realize that there's a convergence between network and security. It ha- Before it was a standalone network. It's with the network guys, security is with the security guys. Now there's a convergence between network and security. And then they have to consider an automated way of detection and response to these attacks. You cannot rely on people like you're under attack and then you have to wait for someone to address it. There's a number of solutions now available in the market, including from Fortinet, that is able to help you automate those things in uh, responding and detecting and mitigating those uh, attacks uh, happening in your environment. Well, rather than being reactive, I will be predictive and say that uh, in a minute or two, while our topic continues to heat up, our coffee is going to get cold. I just I completely forgot about it, and uh, when I took a sip, it's it's uh, it's no longer hot. Uh, so, um, the last two minutes of our coffee break, would you like to leave some thoughts to simmer and steam in the minds of our viewers on why organizations need to put up uh, digital armor around their data system? Sure, sure. I I think uh, what's important is really you know for for. For everyone to realize that cybersecurity, it's a joint undertaking. You know, it's a responsibility both of the user, in this case, or the business, and also those who are, who are providing the solution. You know, it's not just you get a solution, you implement it, and that's it. So, and that involves, you know, also training the your people on on, on you know on cybersecurity hygiene, and also companies. We we do recommend that you have a plan in place. When it happens to you, for example, when you get a ransomware attack, you have to have already steps in place and you have to practice that. Meaning you have to know which people to be involved, uh, what's the next state, step when, for example, one, one you're able to, for example, identify that you've been hacked or you're, you have uh, experiencing a uh, denial of service. And also at the same time, as I, I think I mentioned earlier, some people have payment uh, uh, policies already in place 
And in case if they're not willing to pay because maybe the, they're charging an exorbitant amount, then what are the other contingencies available for you? Like I mentioned, if you have a backup of your 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 critical data or your application, then the best way maybe is to just reboot the whole thing, uh, you know, and and just uh, reinstate uh, whatever you have, you know. So a number of things that you know, but the the, the customer, the businesses needs to consider. And last but not least, obviously, is they have to find the right partner uh, that that can provide these solutions, the expertise, and also the support that they would need to help them address their cybersecurity needs and infrastructure. And you know, again, uh, Fortinet is able to provide that not only the products and the services, but also the the know-how and the breadth and depth of our products that we make available to the market. Well, thought shifting indeed. We appreciate your insights and we hope to discuss more at another Coffee Break soon. Thank you, Louis. Hey, thank you, Dapport. And again, uh, this has been a really engaging discussion. Louis Castaneda is the country manager of Fortinet Philippines, a developer and distributor of cybersecurity solutions. Thank you also to all our viewers for being part of the conversation about armoring the age of ultra digitalization. I'm Dapport Villaseran, and I hope you experienced. Uh, nice perks of the Manila Times coffee break. Have a great week. Fortinet gives you the confidence of knowing that wherever you are or whatever screen you're on and whatever situation you're in, your people, devices, and data are always secure. Fortinet. Digital security everywhere you need it.